It's time for another edition of Live from Studio M on 105.5 Triple M. I'm your host, Jonathan Sutton, and here at Triple M we say it's about the music, and we love when it's about the local music. Today we're going to visit with a band who is celebrating their 10th anniversary soon. We're going to find out a little bit about the creation of the band, how they made their sound, and probably a few random weird stories as well, because that's what usually happens. We're going to start off with a song first, though. It's the Getaway Drivers, live from Studio M. Introductions. This always works very well on the radio. Yes. To, uh, uh, introduce everybody. To uh, to my left, and if you're driving your car to your right, uh, <laughs> would be uh, Ken Healy on bass. All right. Our uh, newest member, Iris Hutchings on uh, vocals, and Greg Thornburg, our drummer. 
uh, to my right, and if you're looking out your car window to the left, we have <laughs> uh, <laughs> Sheila Shigley, uh, my wife, and singer and co-songwriter and fiddle player and mandolin player. And on the uh, far, far left, hanging uh, out the window, hanging out the window, <laughs> would be Dan Butson, uh, our excellent guitar player who's been with us for about three years now. So. Awesome. Yeah. Okay, so did you? So for the genesis of Getaway Drivers, was it the two of you were already married and said, "Let's start a band," or give us a little, a little background on how it all started? No, actually, uh, we didn't know each other when I started this band. So I started it with Ken Keeley, our uh -huh. bass player. And um, a couple other people, Ellie Erickson and Peter Fee, uh, East Side musicians. Sure. Um, and uh, from there we just kind of grew. And Sheila came into the band when she answered an ad for a backup singer. And I already knew who she was at that point because I had seen her sing with her Irish band, Navin. Uh -huh. And she's a great singer. And so she calls me up and she says who she is. And I'm like, well, what do you want to sing with me for? <laughs> You're too good. <laughs> I've never been in a rock band. That was the whole point. Uh, the Gannon one. So now the the question though that I have, Ken, since you were a, was this like a was this like a Yoko thing? You were afraid when 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 she showed up in the band because uh, you know. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think we'd gone through maybe two other background singers before that, and so yeah, when Sheila showed up, we were hoping she would stick, and she stuck for a little while and then left, and then came back. So so yeah, I think she after a month. Yeah. So the second chance, she was there for good. Okay. But then so then the romance though. Right, you weren't married yet. No, no, came no. Later. Right. So right. then, did they like you know in an office when people are having a romance right. and then they pretend like they're not? Like, Ken, did you already know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, there are there are some things you could kind of see eye contact you know, and things that I wasn't seeing. You know, Bob looked at me. You know, wasn't the same one. So how'd you come up with getaway drivers? Um, I was reading a lawsuit. Uh, in the course of my regular day job, and um, I was kind of writing songs about, you know, kind of outlawish people at the time they were writing Americana type stuff, and I was looking for a name for the group. And it was Bob Manor Band, and I wanted something a little bit more, you know, exciting. And I just saw some reference to a getaway driver and a bank robbery, and then there was a car crash, and I thought, the getaway driver, that sounds really great, so maybe I'll try out the getaway driver. And it kind of went with our motif, the songwriting motif at the time, because we, again, we had some storytelling uh -huh. Americana type songs. Yeah. Oh, I thought you meant you were robbing the bars that you were playing. We were, <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's that, just... It was hard for us to get work after a while. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, let's hear another song. What, what are you going to do for us? Uh, this is us, uh, kind of a country number. Well, you can. You can uh, uh... This song is called Hope Road, and it's one of our, it's on the new album. It's one of our more recent compositions. And uh, they sort of start with a seed of an idea, and then they sort of you're off into fantasy land, so we always tell each other not to read too much into every song that we write, because that can be dangerous. But this is about somebody uh, who is watching somebody else get ready to go on the road, and they're torn between letting them go and wanting to go with them. That's the Getaway Drivers, live from Studio Lab.
songwriters who come in and say, I mean it varies, that some say, you know what, every day I sit down and try to write. Others say, all of a sudden something hits them, boom, and they write it quickly. And the I, ladder. That's the ladder for us. Yeah. We're not disciplined to sit down every day. And in the shower, in the car, whenever it's least convenient and you have to grab like a napkin or, you know, and start right. writing, that's when it comes. Yeah. Well, and, I, and you're not alone on that. I remember Michael Fronte coming in here for a, 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 the studio and he said he came up with a great song in the shower and was writing it on the thing, you know, on the door <laughs> and not wanting the steam to go away. <laughs> no, the no, that's so I don't hardcore. know if you've had that or not. But, uh, that's, that's pretty fl fleeting. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll talk about your CD release party coming up, but first, how about uh, another song? Absolutely. What, what do you got for it? This one's called Slipping Away. Okay, do we have a story? Um, yeah, uh, we do kind of have a story on this one. Um, I mentioned our cello player, and I kind of wrote this one uh, for him. We lost him a few years ago um, he, uh, to cancer, and so um, we, just had, we had a quiet period as a band after that, and um, I wrote this song. It's just sort of about seeing, you know, people in everyday things. Um, uh, we have another song similar to that, uh, but this one's more specific to him. Um, and it's just uh, just about missing somebody, really, for sure. So. It's the Getaway Drivers, live from Studio One. It's getting late. It's time I know the air. I don't awake. It's your voice that I hear. In the distance. As the wind takes the 
Rutgers live from Studio M. Uh, so, Bob, the, well, we'll get into the, the new album in a minute, but as far as, I like to sometimes ask about weird gigs that you've had, or maybe bad gigs. Charlie Mars, who's been here for Studio M, had a gig coming up, he came to visit us, and he said that the next day he was going up to Minneapolis, to, a guy was going to propose to his girlfriend, and he was going to like come out of a closet playing guitar, <laughs> which sounded super Craigslisty weird. Yeah. You know? uh, but, and that was highly unusual. Most of the bands usually, though, it's like they had a gig and they expected you know this or that, and then there were pigs running around, or was at a farm or anything. I don't know if you've had anything bad like that. Not to put you on the spot, or generally you've had peaceful, happy gigs. Well, I don't know about peaceful happy. I mean, every every gig's got strange. Uh, strange things. But actually, the strangest gig I, I ever did was actually before the Getaway Drivers, wow. and um, it was the band uh, right before that, and we got invited to play for the American Cancer Society, a big okay. fundraising thing, and we thought it was a great opportunity. There'd be you know all these you know high-profile rich people you know giving to the Cancer Society, sure. and hear us, and maybe book us for another gig, and you know so we thought it was a great opportunity, and. We started to get an inkling that it might not be that cool when we found out it was in a church, okay. a big church. And then um, when we got there, it was all like mostly like cancer patients and wheelchairs and a lot of kids running around. And we had kind of a bar set going, and it was kind of raucous. And so we thought we were playing for like adults, healthy adults who. And it was not really fitting the movie. It, they it were just like, was not. Yeah, it was not. It was wow. not good. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like we were doing a cover of the Beatles. You better run, little girl. And you know, there's like little girls running in front of the stage, and it, just, <laughs> it, was, it was all just wrong. Had to, had to sort of muffle the lyrics, you know. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Yeah. On the spot. yeah. Exactly. Okay. But they didn't. They didn't. You did it though. Uh, we, we did. You, you have yeah. to. You have right. to. We did it. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And your your music writing start as a kid, or like tell me a little bit of. How excited for you? I oh, I just started out really loving music. I mean, when I was, you know, six years old, I was carrying around a cassette tape recorder with me everywhere and um, recording things and listening to things and everything from, you know, bluegrass to, you know, Scott Joplin piano and and then later on when I became a teenager, Led Zeppelin and right, sure. things like that. And then um, you had to hide in the woods to listen to those because yeah, it was, was very strict. Fundamentalist Christian. Fundamentalist. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. So. Um, yeah, so I play a lot of church music. I play piano a lot in church, um, and at rest homes around that area in Superior. And uh, so I didn't really start re actually writing music until I was um, I dropped out of grad school mm -hmm. and decided I would try something else. Yeah. So, but your so your folks so you literally were sneaking Led <laughs> Zeppelin <laughs> music. Well, you know, I didn't really. Yeah, I I, I didn't play it while they were home. This is the first. <laughs> this is the first that they will have heard of it. Yeah. Right. Well, yeah. Like, listen, to mom, dad, it's not me. It's not true. <laughs> it's, uh, yeah. So, so not so a musical family church wise. Oh yeah, but, it's, yeah. And, and still, they're in their seventies, and they still lead most of the music at their church. And my dad has a little band. He calls the Church Mice, and they play uh, gospel bluegrass. Oh, that's really cool. Yeah. So, do they come see the Getaway Drivers? Uh, they have. Yes, they have. They don't quite get it. But <laughs> parents okay. never do. Right? Yeah. Uh, okay. Cool. And then, uh, so as far as our guitar player over here, Dan, and so you've been with the band for a little while, right? Yeah, about three years. Okay. Um, I'm still being introduced to some of Bob and Sheila's stories here. So. <laughs> okay. So how did you find how did you find Dan, or how did they find you, or what? Well, it's an interesting story. Um, yes. Get right in that mic right there, so we can hear. Our the drummer Greg Thornburg, uh, Greg and I went to high school together, um, up in the Wisconsin Rapids area. And uh, I happened to run into him one day and uh, found out he was down here playing drums in Madison. So I said, geez, that sounds like a good time. You know? and he, he invited me to come play with these guys one time. And uh, somehow I stuck and been here for three years now. So. Actually, they're firing you right now. <laughs> they wanted me to do it. They thought it would be less awkward. So, uh, that's Actually, cool. when he showed up, he had been rehearsing our songs for about three months, and he showed up knowing all the songs. It was really amazing. That's so, really smart. That's yeah. a good idea. That's a good way to do it. Well, thanks and great for helping me uh, get a hold of those songs. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so, uh, the latest album, Bellatopia, right? Mm -hmm. So, uh, the recording process for that, was that super quick, or how did, how did it go for it? Sheila's laughing. It, it wasn't super quick. 
Oh. It was uh, probably about, it was two full terms, I'd say, by pregnancy standards. Wow. Um, and, uh, but That's it was worth it because this is the first time we've worked with Brian Daly. Uh -huh. And uh, Brian Daly, I guess he's mainly our producer for this album, and he just worked magic so that, you know, by, for example, by the end of the recording process, you don't hate your own songs because he's been the one slaving away over them. He, in, uh, I should just mention, he's opening for us at the CD release party. Okay, great. And then our good friends American Feedback are gonna close it out, so we're just really happy to be in between those two. But Brian made this a very special album. We've never worked with anybody before until until him. It's. I think it's different, don't you think, Bob, when you have a producer, though? And yeah. It's good and bad. I think it can be challenging in some ways because the songs are your baby. Right, you know, I wrote uh, the, title, the, the lead song, the first song on the record, I wrote from for me to say, and um, uh, she did it better. Yeah, I was going to say, I don't, when I listened to it, it didn't sound like you. No, it wasn't me, <laughs> and it wasn't John Anderson, so right. it, was, it, was, it was Sheila. And, you know, that was Brian. He's like, you know, I think Sheila's lead on this. And, I, and it, so that was a moment for me where I had to, you know, swallow the pride a little bit and say, right. well, you know what, it's for the song. That's what I preached to everybody else, so, you know, it's got to go for me, too. So there are a few moments like that, and most of it, though, is just a, a really great learning process about the, what Brian calls the principle of listening and just, you know, getting tight, tighter as a band and really listening to the little details. And we just had a great time. Uh, we recorded both at my project studio and at DNA, um, and uh, had a really good time, learned a lot, and... Um, Brian mixed the record, so I didn't have to spend 200 hours over the course of the winter mixing a record, and that was great. I had a, it was a good break on the ears, and we were really still enjoying it. Right, although yeah. Sheila's like, I don't know, I kind of liked when he was away. <laughs> <laughs> no, I agree with you, though. When you listen to something over and over, it yeah. does get, it kind yeah. of freaks you out sometimes. Like, yeah. why did we write this? Yeah. Uh, all right, so the CD release party is coming up on Saturday at the High Noon Saloon. Yep. And we've got time for one more song. So what do you want to? What do you guys want to finish up with? Here? Well, we're going to play um, kind of an acoustic number um, that sort of harkens back to our style, maybe of a couple of years ago, mm -hmm. um, just to kind of close up the show on a, a quieter note. And it's called um, "Better Days." So is there? A, is this a sad story too, or? Uh, you know, it's kind of one of my outlaw type of stories, uh, I guess. You know, um, it's just about a, the character is. Um, been through some tough times and and he's gonna you know so one for better days. So, All so right, to get away drivers live from studio. Mm -hmm. Oops, I could turn on the guitar. Mm -hmm. This chair that's door Heading out of this old town Nothing's gonna get me down No more No more And I'm sucking in the nicotine Flicking ashes out into the street
Thanks so much to Drew Ferguson, our engineer. I'm Jonathan Sutton. This is 105.5 Triple M.